Hey guys, welcome back to the series on C Sharp Collections. Today we will understand C Sharp Arrays. If you are new to collections, then I recommend you to watch part 1 first before watching this. I have clearly explained there what are collections and why do we need them. Here we will see the main characteristics of arrays, different ways to declare arrays, how to modify a data in an array, different ways of enumerating arrays, some of the main static methods available in array class. Along the way, we will see a few common exceptions you might encounter while working with array. And finally, we will see different types of arrays available in C-Sharp. So, it means this course will contain almost everything that is required for you to know about an array. So, let's get started. An array is the most simple type of collection. However, this simplicity comes with a cost. That's the array has the least number of features compared to other collections like list and dictionaries. Let's see different features and operations available in array. But you know what? Let's see first how to declare an array in C Sharp. So I'm in my Visual Studio and I have already created a console application. Let's define an array. To define an array, we start with the data type. That's the type of the data that we want the array to contain. Followed by a square bracket, which tells the compiler that this is not a normal simple variable, but an array. And then the variable name. Let's say the variable name is cars. This means this is the variable that can hold an array of strings having names of car. Then we have to instantiate this using new keyword and specify the size of the array. Here the new keyword allocates a new space in the heap. I will discuss about how an array allocates memory in my next video while discussing about comparing two arrays. Since we have specified the size of the array as 3, this array can hold up to 3 items. Let's add few items to it. We can add item using object initialization syntax. That's putting the strings inside curly bracket. Similarly, if you have to store integer data, then you will declare it like this. So these are the arrays with specific size, but you can even add values to an array without specifying the size, something like this. In this case, you pass as many elements you want, but whatever number of elements are passed in the first time, that will be the size of this array. And later in the same program, you will not be able to change it. Now, this way of initializing an array can be done only when you already know what data you are going to store in the array. Like here in first array, you already know you want to store strings Volvo, BMW and Ford and in the second array int of 10, 20 and 30. Let's say you do not know what you want to store. In that case, we define an array with some assumed size and later add the values to it. Something like this. So this array can hold up to 10 items. Let me just align the declarations in one line. I hope declaring an array is quite simple. However, there are a few important things that you should know or else you might write an error prone code. Let's see a few characteristics of an array. The very important characteristics of an array is it has a fixed size. As we have seen, the length of an array is established when the array is created. It means once the array is created, the length is fixed. Like here the length of an array is fixed to 3. Do you know why arrays have fixed length? The reason lies in the memory allocation. When you do new string of 3, the runtime basically allocates 3 space in the memory. And then when we do this, 
it adds value sequentially to the allocated memory blocks. Now, it is highly possible before and after the allocated sequence, there is no space. May be used by some other program. That's the reason we cannot change the size of an array once created. However, there are other collections like list where the size can be dynamically changed. We will discuss about this later. Now let's learn how to iterate the data in an array. I think enumerating data is the most common operation in any collection. For this, let's take an array containing all the planets in our solar system. So, the array variable name is ARR planets. That's array planets and it contains our 8 planets. Now let's iterate through this array and print its content. To iterate we can use for each loop which is the most common loop used with any collections. So it says for each planet in ARR planets array print the planet. Let me debug this. Here our array contains all the planets. So the first planet is Mercury. It goes ahead and prints it. Second item in the array is Venus. Third item is Mars and so on. Let me press F5. See, our code traverses through all the elements in the array and printed it. We can use other loops as well. Let's do the same thing using for loop. Here it prints the element in ith position and it goes from 0 to array length minus 1. It means till number 7. Let me run this. See, both gives the same result. You can use other loops as well, but mostly for each loop looks more intuitive and developers mostly use this loop. So, till now from the characteristics perspective, we have seen that arrays have fixed length and from the array operation perspective, we have seen different ways of declaring an array and how to enumerate an array. Now let's see how to find an item in an array. For this, let's continue with array of planets example. So here I am asking the user to type the planet number that he wishes to display. I store the number in a variable called planet number and prints that. Now how this code basically gets the item? We type the array and then a square bracket. This square bracket basically tells the compiler to get an item from the array. Now which item? That's the number we provide inside the square bracket and this number is known as index. Let's run it and see if it all works. Let's get the first planet of our solar system. That's basically Mercury, right? So let's give one. Ah, looks like our program is not working. It gives us Venus, which is basically the second item, right? Why so? Any idea? That's not working because arrays are zero indexed. And that's the second characteristics of an array. Let's see that. So you have an array of data and these data will be sequentially indexed, right? But not like this. I mean, not starting with one. Instead, for collections, the indexing starts from zero. That's the reason when we give one, we do not get Mercury. Rather, we get the item in one index. That's Venus. Hence, to get the correct result, we should minus the given index number by one. Let's do that. Now let's put a debugger and run our application. Let's get the first item. If you mouse over the array, you can see the indexing here. Zeroth item is Mercury and then Venus and so on. The number typed by the user is 1. 
and 1 minus 1 is 0. So it should display the 0th item. Let's press F5 and we get the expected result as Mercury. I hope the characteristics of array being 0 index is clear to you. Now let's see how you can modify an item in an array. That's very easy. Let's say you want to modify your first element Mercury to Mercury Planet. For that, just type the array name, give a square bracket and mention the index of the element that you want to modify. Since we want to modify Mercury, so the index will be, do you remember arrays are zero based index? So the first element will have zero index. Let's mention that and update this element with a new name, Mercury Planet. Let's run it and see. See, we get the new name. I hope that's very simple, right? Now let's see one of the most common exceptions that you might get while working with an array. For that, let's take the same planet array example. So here we have an array of size 2 and we have added two items to it, Mercury and Venus and just displaying all the array items here. Let's run it. So we get the expected output, Mercury and Venus. Now let's try to add one more item to the array. Let's add Earth as third item at index two. But you can see the size of the array is two and we are trying to add third item to it. Let's put a debugger and run it. So two items added successfully, but see, it was not able to add the third item. Instead, got the infamous index out of range exception. The index out of range exception is a runtime exception thrown only at runtime. I hope the exception tells what it is. This exception is thrown when an invalid index is used to access a member of an array or a collection. The index range of an array is from 0 to n minus 1, where n is the size of the array. It means 2 is an invalid index. And that's right, because we just have the index 0 and 1, right, as the array size is 2. So I just wanted to tell you that you have to be little more careful while indexing any collection. Now let's explore the array class and see how it eases our work. The array class provides ready-made methods and properties for creating, manipulating, searching and sorting arrays and it has many more methods. This really eases our work while working with array. You can find all the properties and methods in the Microsoft documents. You can see here we have whole lot of methods. I will just show you a couple of methods. I hope rest you can explore it on your own. So you can see here we have four consecutive months, January, February, March and April in an array. If you want to reverse the order of the items in this array, then you have to basically write this. Let's print the array. See, the order is reversed. But this code looks to be quite complex, right? But using array class, you can just do it with a single line. Just do this, array.reverse and your array name. And done. Let's run it. See, we get the same output. The order is reversed. The only difference is that right now we have used the ready-made method available in array class. That's reverse. Like that we have lots and lots of functionalities in this class. Like let's see shorting. This code sorts the order of the array item and this code 
checks if march exist in the given array let's run it see you get the sorted list and also you get the result as true which means march exists in the array the whole idea of showing you this is that at times this class comes very handy whenever you have to do any operations with array i would say explore this documentation and see if you already have an existing method to help you there is a high chance that you will already have a method available in the array class okay our final topic related to array is the types of array but video is getting too long and i also want you to explore a bit and learn this on your own hope that's fine if you understood the concept of array then this should be easy to understand if you want me to create a detailed video on this then do comment and let me know i will create a detailed video on these two that's all for this video next video we will discuss about how to compare two arrays if you like the video don't forget to subscribe the channel and drop in your comments for all the future videos on c sharp and other dotnet technologies thanks